Rumour has it, shaky walkabout videos will be a thing of the past. I've invested in the Zhiyun Crane M2 gimbal. Let's look into that. Hi, I'm Tom and you're watching Rumour Has It. Please subscribe for camera news, rumour and information. Remember, your likes below help the channel grow. In an effort to improve my channel quality, I've invested in the Zhiyun Crane M2 gimbal and I have to say I'm impressed. I looked around at alternatives and I considered the DJI Osmo Mobile. But ideally, I wanted something capable of handling the Canon M6 Mark II. This was important to me as I wanted to match the video quality and colours and to reduce the impact of changing systems during a video. The Zhiyun M2 seemed to fit the bill. However, there wasn't much content on using it with the M6 Mark II, and it suggested there was no possibility of connecting wirelessly. More on this later. Whilst this wasn't a deal breaker, it would be nice to have the basics and been able to start and stop recording remotely, so that I don't have to disturb the gimbal every time. I've since discovered that I can wirelessly connect to the gimbal from the M6 Mark II, and the gimbal retains the settings. I'll show you that working later. With that concern resolved, I bought the gimbal, and I've had a little time to play with it. I thought I'd report back my findings and share with you the capabilities and features. Hopefully this will help any budding video makers out there, especially ones that own the M6 Mark II. The gimbal arrives in a hard foam case, and I guess it'd be useful if you're packing for a long trip. But in my use case, I think it'll be stored in the backpack while I'm taking it on a walkabout. The manual supplied is in miniature typeface, so unless you have superman vision, you'll probably need to go with a magnifying glass. I did. However, it gives good details on how to balance the gimbal, so it's useful to follow. The first point to cover is the charging and firmware upgrade port. Thankfully this is USB-C, so I can use my MacBook Pro charger. There's no charger supplied inside the box. Next is the zoom slider. This only works with supported devices like point and shoot cameras with built-in zoom. A full list of compatible devices is on the website. The gimbal has an OLED display which is useful and unusual on a gimbal at this price point. Then we have the joystick for manual movement of the gimbal and you can recenter this at any time with a double tap on the trigger. Next is the mode button which cycles through the various modes and menu settings for the gimbal, and we'll cover these later in the video. The menu items are accessed by pressing this button on the side, which is directly below the on-off switch. The on-off switch has to be slid up and held for a few seconds to activate the gimbal. However, don't switch the gimbal on before mounting and balancing the camera. The gimbal needs to be balanced in all four axes to work properly. Tilt, Roll in the X axis, roll in the Y axis, and finally rotation. Before balancing and before you apply power to the gimbal, please remember to release the red pan lock, which is located directly above the trigger. If you forget to do this, the gimbal will overload and shut down. You also need the pan axis unlocked to complete balancing. Tilt balance is achieved by moving the camera forward and backwards on the mounting plate. All adjustments should be micro-adjustments, as the balance point is very narrow. You will need to support the arm of the gimbal in the approximate balance point when you mount the camera to achieve balance. Notice there's a locking pin which you need to depress when mounting and releasing this plate. This is a safety feature in case you forget to tighten the lock on the camera mounting plate. If the camera falls forward or back, make a micro-adjustment in the mounting plate in the opposite direction. Bear in mind that if you use a zoom lens, even this 15 to 45 lens will affect the balance, and it may need to be tweaked if you alter the zoom. However, I'm finding in practice that the difference is very slight, and if I balance the zoom at the midpoint, then the motors will handle the difference. 
on this lens. Rolling the x-axis is achieved by the bar on the back. This is a red locking screw which identifies it as the only axis that needs to be loosened when packing away the gimbal. I'll show that later. Also note there's a small backstop clamp which can be locked in position to mark the backstop of the arm once balance is achieved. This is required to aid fast setup from storage. Rolling the Y axis is achieved by adjusting the height of the camera where the mounting plate locates. This is done by loosening the screw which can be identified by what looks like a copper washer located between the screw and the body. Again micro adjust this until balance is achieved. And the fourth axis is to balance the rotation. This is achieved by loosening the screw at the top of the handle which allows the rear motor bracket to be micro adjusted until the centre of balance or gravity is directly above the handle. You can check this by leaning the gimbal directly forward to see which side it falls to. It's difficult to get this axis spot on, I found, and it depends on how well you balance the other axis, but as long as it holds position when leaned directly forward, you're close enough for the motors to hold it. The next thing we need to do is set the motor strength in the menu. This is set to low by default, but the M6 Mark II with the 15 to 45 kit lens is only 533 grams. The top weight for the gimbal is 720. So I would suggest changing this to medium. To do this, press the menu button on the side of the gimbal and then navigate using a joystick to where it says motors. Then select the strength. I'm going with medium initially but I'll post a note in the comments if I find I need to change this. When you set the strength of the gimbal, it'll think for a bit and then a tick mark appears to confirm the motors have been adjusted. Now as promised, I'll show you how I connect the wireless system to the M6 Mark II. First of all, install the ZY Play app and open the app. It should detect the gimbal automatically. Press the button to connect to the gimbal and then it'll ask you if you wish to connect to a camera or a smartphone. Select camera and then set your camera into pairing mode on the M6. On the M6 this means select connect to smartphone and when it asks which smartphone you wish to select choose do not display. This effectively puts the camera into manual pairing mode. With the ZY Play app open touch the Wi-Fi symbol at the top right and this scans for a Wi-Fi connection. Select the camera Wi-Fi and enter the password of the camera. This should be displayed on the screen of the M6. Once a connection is established, the gimbal will remember the setting for this device and up to four others. Now we've covered the setup, I'll take the gimbal for a walk to demonstrate the various modes. First, PF mode or pan follow. This mode is fixed in the tilt axis, though it allows panning movements which are smoothed out. This is the default mode. It keeps the horizon level unfixed whilst allowing for smooth sweeping moves left and right. This is probably the most commonly used gimbal mode. Now the L mode or locked mode. This mode gives the gimbal a fixed point of view. So for instance, I can walk around the gimbal and the handle just spins with the gimbal fixed on the original point of view. This is useful for following subjects or objects traveling in a straight trajectory. The next mode is POV or point of view. So the camera will follow in all access, including tilt, which allows you to look up and down as well as side to side. Useful for recording sightseeing trips or even real estate work. These are the three basic modes and then there's some additional modes that require additional button presses. First of all, let's look at the trigger function. If you hold the trigger in any mode, this will temporarily lock the tilt mode. Releasing the trigger returns to the previous motion. Double tapping the trigger will recenter it. Triple tapping the trigger 
will enter selfie mode and triple tapping again will exit selfie mode. Now let's look again at the mode button. Tapping it twice will enter an additional mode called Go. This is more like POV or points of view mode, but it will react much quicker to panning and tilting and is useful for tracking fast moving subjects like children, even grown up kids. Press the mode button twice again from the Go setting and you'll enter vortex mode. This allows you to spin the camera 360 degrees about the centre of balance. Be aware though the centre of balance might differ from the centre of the lens, so you might get an eccentric wobbly video. A single tap on the mode button will return you to standard modes. One additional mode that does not require a button press if you turn the gimbal 90 degrees to the left, the gimbal automatically enters portrait mode and this is useful if you want to film TikTok videos or YouTube shorts. There are some other features to mention. Under wireless connection to the camera, the functions available with wireless connection vary according to which device you connect to. Some cameras with built-in zoom may allow the zoom slider to operate and some smartphones will also function with this, but it's not yet available on the iPhone 12 app, which is unfortunate because I'd like to have remote access to all three lenses on the iPhone 12. If you're in any doubt, there's a handy table on the Xeon website which details the features available on each device, and I suggest you check that. However, it's always worth confirming yourself, as the listing does not mention support for the M6, yet I was able to get this working by just manually pairing the gimbal. Once paired, I'm able to start and stop the video recording using the record button on the gimbal. Another feature is the accessory mounting screw on the side. It's possible to mount an additional handle or external microphone, or any other accessory that uses a quarter inch thread. If you remove your camera to take photos, you can store the mounting screw here, otherwise it's easy to lose. Getting back to that red screw in the back of the gimbal. If you wish to pack the gimbal away, then remove the camera from the mounting plate and loosen the red screw. Slide the arm back to where it will swing onto the top of the handle and watch for a small silver pin which pops up when the arm is in location. This pin will locate the cradle arm. Retighten the red screw and apply the red panel switch located above the trigger. Now you have the locked gimbal ready for transport. Thanks for watching, rumour has it. I hope you found this useful. Please like and if you're new here, click the subscribe button below because it really helps the channel grow. And for my part, I'll continue to bring you camera news, rumour, and information.